Tonight, Sophie's making a nostalgic festive feast inspired by her mother's home cooking. She's roasting a delicious rib of beef, served with a creamy horseradish sauce. Then she's hoping to unite a divided nation with her cheesy Brussels sprout gratin. And for pudding, her mum's special recipe, the chilled lemon souffle. So I'm going to cook a Christmas dinner. It's not the absolute standard Christmas dinner, the turkey and all the trimmings, because that's actually quite a modern business. So I'm going to go back a bit and I'm going to use the excuse of Christmas to cook a wonderful rib roast of beef. Can you see this? You can see all that lovely fat on the outside. And that is a really good thing, so you get the full flavour out of it. So let's get this baby up and into a roasting tin. And I'm now going to season it. So I'm going to have some mustard, good old English mustard. Let's put a few dollops on top there. And I know this looks a bit scary because the English mustard is hot. But the strange thing is that in the heat of the oven, it loses its own heat and you get quite a mild flavour. And it's just, it's about flavour, not about mouth searing heat. I'm going to put some pepper on as well. Gorgeous. And some salt. And then I'm going to get really down and dirty. I'm just going to smear this all over. Nice coat. It does make for a really nice outer crust. That's it, really. That's all you need to do in preparation. Let's get rid of all that mustard. So this piece of beef will take about two hours to cook. That's for medium rare. But then you need to add on at least half an hour for a joint this size to rest. And let's get that in right now. It cooks at quite a high temperature, about 220 degrees. So after half an hour, you need to cover it with a bit of foil. That's why it's sitting there waiting. So that it just protects it from getting burnt throughout the rest of the cooking. Now, one of the things I love with roast beef is a horseradish sauce. This was another thing my mum did quite often when we did have beef. And uh, it's a really simple, old fashioned British sauce. It involves cream and it also involves good quality creamed horseradish. But first of all, I have to whisk the cream. You know, one Christmas, I remember when I was quite little, my mum, I think she was testing out the recipe, but she decided to do not a three bird roast, but a seven bird pie fed an army, an army. That is a fine for the moment. I don't want to over whisk it because I've still got my ingredients to mix in. It's the horseradish. And really it's as much as you like. I mean, I do like a fairly good hit of horseradish. That seems to me the point. You want a little bit of heat. So I'm going to put about, about that much in. As with so many things in cooking, there are no exact amounts. It's kind of just what's right, what's enough. And I'm going to add a scant teaspoon of caster sugar. Then next, a little bit of lemon zest. My mum was obviously a wonderful cook and uh, I just kind of helped her in the kitchen. But I never really thought I would go into cooking. I ended up falling into it more by accident than by design and then realising that I, that I enjoyed working with food and that I knew quite a bit about it. But no, I spent my late teens and my early 20s first doing a maths degree and then working in pop videos and working behind the scenes in pop videos. Then somebody asked me, somebody who knew my mum, asked me to write something for them and, and I did. And, uh, and that's how I started. They quite liked it. And they asked for more. Now, I think it needs, certainly needs a little spritz of lemon. Just, just to give it a touch of an edge and to bring everything together. Let's give it one more whisk. Of course, I have to be really careful now that I don't over whisk this because I do not want horseradish butter. Let's see what we've got. Mm. Oh yes. Let's pop that into my little serving bowls. One for each end of the table. And 
that's going in here. You can make this several hours in advance. It doesn't have to be a last minute thing. Make it before you've drunk too many glasses of champagne or whatever it is that is your tipple. Fabulous. Well, that is that sorted. Now, I know I said that it would take two hours to cook and half an hour for the beef to rest. And I thought you probably didn't want to hang around for that long. So I've got another one already roasted and rested. Let's see, here it is. Right, this one, let's go back and close that oven. This one has got foil on. You know, I said you had to put foil on after about half an hour. So you stop it burning. Let's reveal now. Oh, that looks nice. And God, it smells brilliant. Now the trick for carving a rib roast, you see these nice big bones down there and they go all the way down there and under there. It's like a rack for the meat. And what you can do, just maybe loosen some of those strings. We don't need those. We're going to carve down close to the bones. The meat's looking good, I can tell you already. You use your knife just up against the bone, it guides you down and you can just cut the bone out like that. Now, if you want to give your dog a Christmas present, it's quite nice, isn't it? Much easier than carving a turkey. You just slice it into gorgeous, juicy pieces. That looks just divine. So there it is, gorgeous rib roast of beef with horseradish sauce. And next, I'm going to be making a Brussels sprout gratin that almost everybody is bound to like. And then following that, a dish that my mother loved to make at Christmas, my chilled lemon souffle.